Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. The height of the columns is 4 meter. Length of the beam is also 4 meter. The moment of inertia for the columns is 2i. The moment of inertia for the beam is i. In this frame, there are no loads. The vertical displacement in the point A is given as 2 millimeter. When we convert millimeter into meter, we are getting 0.002 meter and the displacement occurs downwards. The horizontal displacement in the point A is given as 4 millimeter. When we convert that into meter, we are getting 0.004 meter and the displacement occurs towards the left side. The rotation in the point A is given as 0.001 radian and this displacement occurs clockwise. The flexural rigidity EI is given as 8000 kN meter square. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this frame, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 6. They are the vertical reactions VA, VD, the horizontal reactions HA, HD, and the movements MA and MD. The available equilibrium equations are 3. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 6 minus 3. We will get 3. Since all of the displacements occur in the point A, let us remove the vertical reaction VA, horizontal reaction HA and the movement MA. When we remove them, the point A becomes a free end. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are three coordinates. Let us keep the vertical reaction VA as the first coordinate, the horizontal reaction HA as the second coordinate and the moment MA as the third coordinate. We are keeping them as the coordinates because we have removed them. Let us assume that VA is acting upwards. The horizontal reaction is acting towards the left side and the movement MA is acting in the clockwise direction. Finally, if we get any negative value, that means our assumption is incorrect, then we can change the directions. We know the formula to find the final answers. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. In the frame, there are no loads. So, inside the delta L matrix, all of the values will be 0. In this formula, now let us find the delta matrix. To find delta 1, we have to look at the first coordinate. Our first coordinate is the vertical reaction VA, which is acting upwards. The vertical displacement in the point A is acting downwards. Since this displacement is acting in the opposite direction of the coordinate, we have to apply this value as negative. To find delta 2, we have to look at the second coordinate. Our second coordinate is HA, which is acting towards the left side. The horizontal displacement in the point A is also acting towards the left side. Since this displacement is acting in the coordinate direction, we have to apply the value as positive. To find delta 3, we have to look at the third coordinate. Our third coordinate is the moment MA, 
which is acting in the clockwise direction the rotational displacement in the point a is also acting in the clockwise direction since this displacement is acting in the coordinate direction we have to apply this value as positive in this formula now we are going to find the delta matrix for that we are going to use unit load method in the unit load method first we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate and find the moment m1 then we have to apply unit load in the second coordinate and find the moment m2 finally we have to apply unit moment in the third coordinate and find m3 now let us find m1 we know that for that we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate to find the moment m1 we have to make sections here we have three different parts a b b c and c d so we have to make three sections you can see that i have made three sections the first section in a b the second section in b c and the third section in c d before finding the moments let us make the free body diagram for that i am going to split the frame from the points b and c so that we will get three different parts in the point a we have applied unit load in the upward direction because of that a reaction is developed in the point b downwards here it will be upwards here downwards and here upwards let us find the moment in the point c the unit load is acting in the clockwise direction and the distance is 4 1 into 4 we will get 4 since the load is acting in the clockwise direction the moment developed should be acting in the anti clockwise direction and here it should be acting in the clockwise direction before finding the moment m1 let us enter the flexural rigidity origin and the limits for a b i have made the section at a distance of x from the point a so the origin is a the limit is 0 to 4 the moment of inertia for ab is 2i so the flexural rigidity should be 2ei for bc i have made the section at a distance of x from the point b so the origin is b the limit is 0 to 4 the moment of inertia for bc is i so the flexural rigidity should be ei for cd i have made the section at a distance of x from the point c so the origin is c the limit is 0 to 4 the moment of inertia for cd is 2i so the flexural rigidity should be 2ei now we are going to find the moment m1 we are going to find the moments in the right hand side in this rule clockwise will be positive and anti clockwise will be negative let us find m1 in ab for this load there is no perpendicular distance so the moment will be zero let us find m1 in bc this unit load is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x we will get x let us find m1 in cd this movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive now let us apply unit load in the second coordinate and find the movement m2 now let us make the free body diagram we have applied unit load in the point A towards the left side. So a reaction is developed in the point B 
towards the right side here it will be towards the left side here towards the right side and here towards the left side now let us find the moment in the point B this unit load is acting in the clockwise direction and the distance is 4 meter 1 into 4 we will get 4 since the load is acting in the clockwise direction the developed movement should be acting in the anti-clockwise direction here it should be acting in the clockwise direction here anti-clockwise direction and here in the clockwise direction now let us find m2 in a b this unit load is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive 1 into x we will get x now let us find m2 in a b this movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive now let us find m2 in c d this movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive the unit load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so it will be negative and the distance is x 1 into x we will get x now let us apply unit movement in the third coordinate and find the movement m3 let us make the free body diagram we have applied unit movement in the point a in the clockwise direction so in the point b a unit movement is developed in the anti-clockwise direction here it should be clockwise direction here anti-clockwise direction and finally here in the clockwise direction let us find m3 in a b the unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive now let us find m3 in bc the unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it is positive let us find m3 in cd the unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive in the delta matrix now let us find delta 1 1 the formula is integration of m1 square upon ei dx for a b the value of m1 is 0 so no need to make the integration for bc the limit is 0 to 4 for cd the limit is 0 to 4 for cd the flexural rigidity is 2 ei so we have to multiply the ea value with 2 in the formula let us apply the values of m1 now we can take a calculator and do these two integrations if you do not know how to make integrations in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video i have used the calculator and got these two values after adding these two values we are getting delta 1 1 now let us find delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 the formula is integration of m1 m2 upon ei dx in the formula let us apply the values of m1 and m2 after integrating we are getting these two values after adding them we are getting delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 now let us find delta 1 3 and delta 3 1 both of them having the same formula integration of m1 m3 upon ei dx in the formula let us apply the values of m1 and m3 after integrating we are getting these two values after adding them we are getting delta 1 3 and delta 3 1 now let us find delta 2 2 the formula is integration of m2 square upon ei dx in the formula let us apply the values of m2 after integrating we are getting these three values after adding them we are getting delta 2 2 
Now let us find delta 2 3 and a delta 3 2 both of them having the same formula integration of m2 m3 upon ei dx. In the formula let us apply the values of m2 and m3. After integrating we are getting these three values. After adding them we are getting delta 2 3 and delta 3 2. Now let us find delta 3 3. The formula is integration of m3 square upon ea dx. In the formula let us apply the values of m3. After integrating we are getting these values. After adding them we are getting delta 3 3. In the delta matrix we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. In this formula we have calculated everything. Let us apply them. We can add these two matrices. After adding we are getting these. For this matrix we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link you can click and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. After multiplying these two matrices, we are getting VA, HA and MA. For VA, we have got a negative value. That means our assumption is incorrect. We assumed that VA is acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0 and find hd. Then let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find vd. Now let us take moment about d and find md. Let us assume that md is acting in the clockwise direction. After the calculation for md, we are getting a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. md is acting in the clockwise direction. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.